Well, we're going to have to go straight into the topic, and we are um, in our commentary on the book of Revelation. Today we'll be reading from chapter 20 and verses 6 to 10 inclusive. So it is the book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verses 6 to 10 inclusive. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever and all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Well, last week we spoke about this first resurrection and the thousand years. And I would like to elaborate a little bit more of what we mentioned already last week. The thousand years, we said that it is a spiritual and symbolic number. It's not a literal number as some people may think it is. It is a number that is a perfect time frame in God's mind that he has put to save people and to judge people at the end of it. And that thousand years can be the entire lifespan in this realm. Because a day to God is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day to God. Therefore, there is no time for the one who has created time. For him, he can go forward, backward, anytime, all the time, as he pleases. For God, time does not exist. He is the creator. So this thousand years is your life. And it can be the very beginning from Adam, the first Adam, till the last human being that comes. All that lifespan can be taken as a thousand years. And, the th and this first resurrection. Now, why is it the first resurrection? And what is the first resurrection all about? First resurrection is to do with the first coming of the Lord Jesus and the second resurrection has got to do with the second coming of the Lord Jesus. I'll just wish to read this. Who are going to be part of the first resurrection? Well, last week we took verses 4 and 5. I'll just read them again. They're not on the screen, but I'll read them again. And let's see who are those who will be part of the first resurrection. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. So who are going to be part of the first resurrection? Those who were martyred for the sake of Jesus and for the sake of the word of God. Those who never worshipped the, the beast, never had the mark of the beast on their forehand or on their hand or on their forehead. Those who rejected the world and the system of the world. The first resurrection is their portion. And we said, those who are born twice will die once. And those who are born once will die twice. Those who are born once will die twice. Born once, the biological, physical birth that every single human being goes through. If you are born only the physical birth, you will die twice. One, the physical death. Second, the spiritual death, which is the separation of the spirit with its creator. But those who are born twice 
will die only once. Born once, physical, second, spiritual from the baptismal font in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If you are born second time, the baptismal font birth, you will only die once, physical, but spiritual, you will live forever. For he who has the Son has eternal life. You will never die again. Now, the first resurrection is while you live on earth. That's your first resurrection. The second resurrection when Christ comes the second time. What is the first resurrection? When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you grow in a Christian family but living for Christ. And when you as an adult come forth and receive him in the baptism that you never been baptized before. But if you were baptized as a child and you grow into the faith, you are born again because baptism is born again. It is one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Christ. Now when you are baptized as an infant, but as you grow older, and you mature, you need to build a relationship with your Lord Jesus. Building that relationship maintains the first resurrection for you because you are born now from above, no longer from below. The first resurrection means before I was lost, but now I'm found. Before I was dead, but now I am alive. The first resurrection means before I used to go to the club, but today I go to the church. I used to use foul language, but today I praise the Lord. My tongue has changed. My heart has changed. My mind, my entire being has changed. This is being resurrected the first time. I'm no longer of old, but I am anew in Christ Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. Amen? So now... We come to verse 6. Those who are part of the first resurrection, i.e. true Christians, not just by name, but by deed. Those who are true Christians, verse 6 is for you. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are they those who truly wish to live for Christ, who wish to follow Christ wholeheartedly, who reject the world, the pleasures of the world, the treasures of the world, and the prestigious life the world gives. Those who reject the world and everything it gives. Blessed are you and holy you are in the sight of God because the first resurrection is your portion. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. First resurrection, I live no longer, but Christ lives in me. I do not live for myself, I live for the Lord Jesus. That is the first resurrection. That is the first resurrection. Now to people as such, over such, the second death has no power, you see? What is the second death? Spiritual death. We said, if you are born once, you die twice. Physical, spiritual. The physical death, the spirit leaves the body, separates from the body. The spiritual, the spirit separates from God. Now this is the eternal death. This is the real death when my spirit separates from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To, this, to such person, you call them dead. To such person, you call them dead. Now, since you are part of the first resurrection, i.e., I live for the Lord, I breathe the Lord, I seek the Lord, the Lord is all I want in this world. Not in the next, in this world. I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. I walk in this world, but I, but I live for Christ. If you are that kind of a person, the second death 
has no power over you. And the second death is separation of the spirit from, a, from the creator. When Christ is your portion, God is your dad. You live forever. He who has the son has freedom. Freedom. 